Why do some Canadian students with very high MCAT and GPA scores get rejected from medical school, while a large number of students with average or below average scores get accepted? I'll answer this, bust some common myths, and give you some hard facts so you know exactly how to get into med school in Canada. Before we get started, hi, I'm Nadine Evans with BMO Academic Consulting. Make sure you subscribe on whatever social media channel you're watching this from now so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. If you'd like us to help you get into medical school, click on the link either above or below this video to schedule your free initial consultation. First and foremost, gaining admission into a medical program is extremely competitive. In fact, the success rate for admissions into Canadian Faculty of Medicine is as low as 4 to 10%. So to answer my earlier question, why Canadian applicants with top GPA and MCAT scores are getting rejected while those with less impressive scores are accepted, it all has to do with planning and being involved in the right non-academic activities. These are essential in the development of non-cognitive skills and emotional intelligence that faculties of medicine are looking for in their candidates. To dive deeper into this point, let's consider the admission statistics for faculties of medicine in the province of Ontario. All six schools in Ontario have an acceptance or success rate of below 10%, with some of them being even less than 5%. So how can you increase your odds of acceptance? I'll tell you. Let's go straight into some common facts and myths when it comes to planning in advance for medical school admissions. Myth number one, you must enroll in a pre-med program such as a life science, health science, or medical science program because medical schools prefer students from these fields of study. This is false. The majority of medical schools don't care which program you enroll in as an undergraduate student. They simply care that you've taken all the prerequisite courses and that you have performed well academically, regardless of the program. In fact, by being enrolled in a pre-med program like thousands of other applicants, you do not set yourself apart or show yourself as a unique candidate. Medical schools actually prefer students who come from diverse educational backgrounds. So enroll in any program that you're passionate about and explore your interests while taking prerequisite courses, which will allow you to prepare for the MCAT and also apply to the majority of medical schools in Canada. Myth number two, you must attend a brand name university such as the University of Toronto to get into medical school because medical schools prefer students from prestigious universities. Much like your program of study, medical schools do not care about which university you attend as an undergraduate. They simply want to see whether or not you perform well academically and that you have met all the requirements. The prestige of the school has nothing to do with you gaining acceptance into a medical program. In fact, sometimes attending a brand name university may hurt your chances because they're more competitive. Now, of course, if you're passionate about a specific subject matter or a field of study and this program is only offered by a brand name university, then by all means go ahead and enroll because the most important aspect of performing well academically is pursuing something that you're actually passionate about. Myth number three, all that matters is your grades and your MCAT scores when it comes to applying to medical schools. So this goes back to the question that I asked at the very beginning. Having a high GPA and MCAT score does not guarantee admission into a Canadian Faculty of Medicine, as a significant number of students with extremely high scores are rejected every single year. Furthermore, if the only thing that mattered to the Faculties of Medicine was your GPA and MCAT scores, then why would they have you complete such detailed applications, writing essays, personal statements, needing reference letters, and then inviting you for an interview? Obviously, there are other factors at play when it comes to admission that are related to your past experiences as a candidate and how they have helped you improve or develop your emotional intelligence and non-cognitive skills. Planning in the early undergraduate years is essential when it comes to applying to medical faculties. So let's consider some facts. Fact number one, students that plan in advance, according to BMO's independent research study, are 10 times more likely to get into a faculty of medicine the first time they apply as compared with other students who have not planned in advance. And of course, they save themselves from the hassle and the financial burden of reapplication. Fact number two, you must have a clear plan of action from the early undergraduate years in order to stand out among the thousands of other applicants. This means you must have been involved in the appropriate activities, both academically and non-academically, during your early undergraduate years so that you can provide evidence in your application of the qualities that the admissions committee are looking for in a strong candidate. You need to determine your own unique answer to why do you want to be a doctor, and you need to devise a practical, pragmatic route to that goal. Fact number three, 
you must avoid pre-med clubs, guidance counselors, blogs, forums, etc. to stand out. First and foremost, you should be aware of the fact that most pre-med clubs, because of their financial needs, have exclusive financial partnerships with various academic consulting companies and prep companies that provide financial support to these clubs in exchange for access to their students and their email lists, which will serve as a marketing tool for these companies. Furthermore, as a result of these exclusive financial partnerships between pre-med clubs and other organizations, the members are only exposed to the information and perspectives shared by these affiliates. So in a sense, there's a monopoly over the information that's presented to the members of these clubs, and they're not able to form a fully informed decision when it comes to planning for medical school. Secondly, and most importantly, if your purpose is to set yourself apart from all other candidates and present yourself as a unique applicant in person, then it doesn't make sense to do what everybody else is doing or following the generic instructions and advice that are provided to all of these students by these pre-med clubs. In fact, if you follow their advice, you will only turn yourself into a generic applicant and will most definitely not stand out among the pack. Fact number four, you must follow your passion. So this is very simple and straightforward. By following your passion, you will most likely perform well academically and achieve the GPA that most med schools are looking for. By studying something that you're passionate about, you will, you will ensure that you perform well academically and automatically set yourself apart from the other applicants as we discussed earlier. Fact number five, you can enroll in any program or university you like as long as you perform extremely well and meet all the requirements set in place by the faculties of medicine. It's not essential that you enroll into a pre-med program or attend a prestigious university. Fact number six, you must select appropriate non-academic activities and referees for your application. Medical schools in Canada want to know that you're a well-rounded individual who possesses strong non-cognitive skills and emotional intelligence. In order to develop or improve these skills and intelligence, you must be involved in activities outside of academics that serve to enhance these qualities. And of course, these activities will be used as evidence in your application to demonstrate to the admissions committee that you do possess strong non-cognitive skills and emotional intelligence. Number seven, you have to get rid of all your plan Bs. If you have a plan B, such as applying to graduate school or other professional programs in Canada, then you're less likely to gain admission into a medical program. This is because having a backup plan indicates that you're not wholeheartedly committed to the process. If this is the case, you need to honestly re-examine your true motivations for wanting to pursue medicine. Unless you're 100% committed to gaining admission and having to reapply as your only backup plan, then you won't devote the appropriate resources and attention that an effective and successful long-term plan requires. Okay, so now for the final fact. Fact number eight, you must invest even more time and resources prior to the application process than during the application process. So why is that? Because it's all about planning in advance. And this means doing all the right things before you apply so that you have evidence of possessing strong non-cognitive skills and emotional intelligence which you can provide on your application and discuss during your interviews. You need to demonstrate to the admissions committee that you have spent a sufficient amount of time investing in the profession, increasing your knowledge, and more importantly, being involved in various non-academic activities that demonstrate your capacity for a non-cognitive skill or help you develop a certain non-cognitive non skill, which you did not possess in the past. So the point is, there is no magic pill when it comes to getting into medical school. It requires hard work and appropriate planning. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, so please subscribe, like, and leave a comment if you have any questions that we can help you with. If you'd like us to help you get into medical school, click on the link either above or below this video to schedule your free initial consultation. Thanks again, and see you next time.